Welcome back to Honest News. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, I'm going to begin with the book of John, chapter 6, in verse 66. I believe we're in the time, spiritually speaking, interesting enough, even in the physical, in the natural. But spiritually, I believe we're in the time, the beginning of spring, and the harvest that takes place before the harvest of the barley and the first fruits that of the barley and the first of the first fruits that comes out of the barley is the almonds and the flax. And I believe we're in the time spiritually of the almonds. And the almonds have to do with a quickening. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the scripture. We're in the time where there's a need of a quickening. We've got to have a quickening from the Lord. We begin with John chapter 6 and verse 65. This is Jesus speaking. And Jesus said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for giving us direction and leading us and guiding us into all truth by your Spirit. We pray, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that destroys the yoke, that this word will be sown into the hearts of your people. We plead the blood of Jesus as we minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. These are not the world. These are his disciples. And notice the 666. Without question, this is a warning. This is a warning to us today. We know that man of sin is coming, that wicked. We know the mark of the beast will soon be issued. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Jesus turns to his own twelve Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Psalm chapter 80 and verse 18. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Quicken us. Luke 
we will not go back from thee. We will call upon thy name. Notice, Jesus said, No man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Are you sure God called you? Are you sure? that you came to the Lord by the Spirit? Are you sure that you're His? No man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. There's a lot of folks in this hour that are professing, listening, professing to know Jesus. If we're going to follow him in this hour and not turn back, first of all, we have to have been called. Amen? You cannot come to the Lord except it were given unto you from the Father. And there's another place where the Lord says, except the Spirit draw, they cannot come. Amen? And in Song of Solomon, we see, draw me, and we will run after thee. You cannot come to the Lord, you cannot be saved, if the Holy Spirit did not draw you. Amen. It's not about turning over a leaf, a new leaf. Amen. It's not a New Year's resolution. This is not something where you add the Lord to your bucket list. Something to do. This is not a hobby. Except it were given to you of the Father. Are you listening? It's the same thing Jesus said to Simon Peter. When Peter, Simon Peter said that he was the Christ. Of God. Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven, and upon this rock, a revelation of Jesus Christ, the rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You cannot be saved if the Lord does not save you. Amen. You're not saved just because you say a few magic words. This generation, there are those out there that think, oh, I said just the right word. The minister got me to repeat after him. Amen. If the Father did not reveal to you the Son through the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. This comes by revelation. And let me take another step. This comes by a conviction. And that's what we're dealing with today. A quickening. Conviction. A quickening. I was not saved because I decided I wanted to be saved one day. Amen? I remember my experience. I was convicted of the truth. Nobody had to tell me, no man, no mortal man had to tell me that I was a sinner. The lights came on. God revealed to me. I knew I was a sinner. 
and I began to turn to Jesus. Are you listening? From that point on, I began to follow Jesus, and there was a regeneration that began. Being born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. That's not something man can do. And that same spirit that drew you, the same spirit that you was given life, conceived of the spirit, born of the spirit, is the same spirit that must quicken you and I more than just once. Amen. We need to continually be quickened by the Lord. If we're not continually being quickened by the Lord, by His Spirit, and we will learn that is by His Word, we're going to go back, people. We're going to go back. That's what we do. That's what this ministry is all about is giving God's word, not the letter of the word, but the spirit. Amen? To quicken you so you won't go back. To quicken you. To keep you convicted of the truth. Amen? Not condemn you, but to convict you. To bring conviction so that you know the truth. No matter how dark it gets, there is a reality in Christ Jesus. Amen? He is the truth. Praise His name. You don't learn that from man. Let me take another step. You don't just learn that from a book. And I'm talking about the Bible. You don't just learn that from the Bible. Jesus said, you search the scriptures. You think in those scriptures, you have eternal life. He says, but those scriptures testify of me. Listen, but you will not come to me that you might have life. Amen. Glory to God. You got to come to Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. Amen. So you don't have to go back if you are quickened, given life, quickening of the Spirit, glory to His name. Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort. In my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Boy, there's a whole lot here. Isn't the scripture, didn't Jesus say, the comforter? I will not leave you comfortless. This is my comfort. In my affliction. For thy word. Hath. Quickened me. Amen. Holy Spirit came to convict. Of the truth. Because they don't believe. Amen. Jesus says when he comes. Will he find faith on the earth. There's got to be a continually. A continual quickening in our lives to keep us alive. Do you hear what I said? It's like the songwriter put it. 
It's the Holy Ghost and fire that's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Amen. Oh, my. It's the Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive, keeping me alive. Oh, keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Oh, it's the Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive. Keeping me alive, oh, keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost in fire, keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Oh, yes. Praise his name. John, chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus says, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. Jesus is quickening us in this hour by his word. Amen. By the Spirit by his word, by his spirit, praise his name. John chapter 6, verse 63, a few verses before 666. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Amen. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit, and they are life. Now, what is required for there to be a quickening, brothers and sisters. If, they're going, if there's going to be a quickening in our lives, what's required? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 36. Thou fool, or O foolish, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Amen. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. You see, that's something the religious can't do. The religious can't die to self. Amen. Oh, they try all kinds of new programs. Trying all kinds of things today. Try to make themselves better. Amen. But only the Spirit of God, only the Spirit of God, through the quickening of the Spirit, by the truth, through Jesus Christ, only through the operation of the Spirit, through faith, can the flesh be killed. Amen? Oh yeah, man can kill the flesh as far as the man, as far as the natural. But only the Spirit, only the truth, only God's Word, only the sword of the Spirit can slay the flesh. I don't care how religious you are. You can't produce that. If you can't produce the killing of the flesh, that carnal man, that 
old man of sin. If you can't produce that, what makes you think you can produce a quickening? Amen. There's got to be a death to the self-life, people. And only through the operation of the Spirit can this be accomplished. Amen. It's the Spirit that quickeneth. Amen. The words of Jesus Christ, which are spirit and life, will kill the flesh. That's why those that are in the flesh don't want to be around those that are in the spirit. Because they don't want to die. They don't want that flesh to die. Remember in the Old Testament, when God, the Father, when God Almighty was speaking from the mount, it was on fire and smoke. The people cried out to Moses and said, we don't want to hear his voice, lest we die. We don't want to hear his voice, but we're going to die. Are you listening, people? And there was a cherubim with a sword placed to keep the way of the tree of life. And you can't get to the tree of life except through the sword of the Spirit. There's got to be a slaying of the self-life. That's what Job learned too. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Amen. Job even learned, he said, would he kill me? No. It feels like it sometimes, doesn't it, folks? No, he would put life in me. He would strengthen me, Job said. See, Job was learning, yeah, I'm dying on the outward. The outward man's perishing. But Job learned something. There's something going on on the inside. Though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the scripture says, if that same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. He shall quicken your mortal body. The Lord is raising up some in this hour. But he can't raise you up if you're not dead. Amen? He can't build you up. Amen? When he was talking about building the temple in three days. He was talking about his body after his death, the resurrection. Same thing with you and I. If he's going to build us up, if he's going to raise us up, there's got to be a death to the self-life. Are you listening? And it's through his words. Amen. We're going to overcome if we're going to continually to follow him and we're not going to go back, we're not going to draw back, we're not going to fall away in this hour from the truth, from the Lord, we need that quickening people. And what did we learn? I will call upon, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon Thy name. When? When am I going to call upon the Lord? When he quickens us. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us. And we shall call upon thy name. Amen. Glory to God. Praise his name. Turn us again, O Lord, God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Turn us again, O Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. 
praise his name. Turn us again, Lord. Turn us again. Praise his name. Turn us again and again and again. Quicken us again and again and again. Turn us, Lord, until we're facing you. Amen. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Why is the voice behind them? They're going in the wrong direction. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Notice, when they are turned, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. They're not facing his back. They're not walking away. Amen? Amen. They've turned around and they're face to face with him. Amen. You look at the New Testament scriptures, you find that as we behold the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus, we are changed from glory to glory, from faith to faith and glory to glory. We've got to behold his face. Amen. If we're going to be changed, We've got to look upon his face, brothers and sisters. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last ever to rejoice. 